Today, we're going to be uh, looking at out-of-the-box solutions for the water industry. My name is Alex Pacini. I'm the business development manager here at AWC Water Solutions and one of the water treatment specialists. So before we get into it, a lot of times you look at, okay, wh what's in the box? And we understand a little bit what's in there. So we will go a little bit more technical than some of the previous ones, but I, I guess this is what it's all about. So a quick, just a little background on AWC. So we've been around for 40 years. We design and build uh, water and wastewater treatment plants. We have close to 600 plants worldwide. They're all modular. So when we think of out of the box, they're essentially literally modular plants. Everything is divided into three different categories. So we do modular potable water, uh, wastewater and package systems. And a lot of times they're interconnected. So you might use one process connected to another process depending on the, the specific application and site work. With that, let's get started. So we're covering dissolved air flotation simply because it's one that keeps coming up. And of course, it's one that will actually focus on the modular aspect of treatment. So doing it with bubbles. Dissolved air flotation has been around for a long time. A lot of people have used it. This was done back in the you know ancient Greeks and Romans where they fiddled around with water treatment. And we know the Romans were good at water treatment to, to, to a certain degree. And of course, with DAF came a lot of different um, technologies that were used in different processes, mainly in, in mining and some industrial um, patents. Of course, no, going into the 1920s and 1960s, that's when it was turning to be very popular in Europe. And it was brought into North America to start trying to perfect the idea of using something like dissolved air flotation in potable water treatment plants. So this is a general layout of what a potable water treatment plant looks like. You'll see that in one of these modules, it'll be separated into different stages. Um, each stage is very important. So we'll start with the flocculation stage, which we'll touch a little bit more here in the next minute as to why it works, how it works, and the importance of the flocculation. Then we're going to go into the dissolved air flotation stage. And then from there, you're going into media. Media is not always needed. It depends if you're going into potable or a wastewater. This is a side view. This is the one that I really like showing because it's like the aha moment where you have a better idea of how one of these things works. So you'll notice that we start again with the flocculation. From the flocculation, we're going through two different stages of flocculation. So we've got a slow mix and a, a rapid mix. Then we're going in through the saturators, which is blowing air going up through the cell. And then you've got your skimmer that's coming off the top, which is essentially making sure that it can take everything that's coming up off the froth and in through the skimmer and you've got your effluent water going down below. So if you always think of water treatment as a black box, well here we're opening, kind of peeling the curtain back a little bit to, to see how it works on the inside. And again, this is without a filter. So now, now that we understand what the technology looks like, then we can start looking at applications and how things like this can either be retrofitted or putting in new plants. This is a pilot plant. It's one of the older pilot plants, but just the visual alone kind of gives you a better idea of how it's coming through. Again, we've got a flocculation ahead of this, and then you've got your saturators going through. So as you can see, the water that's going through, these are all micro bubbles. It almost looks like milk or like a mocha. And then you've got your skimmer that's rolling off the top. Uh, this is a very small pilot. Again, pilots can only do so much. But some of the key aspects of this is you've got to look at your flocculation rate, your recycling rate. You are recycling water back as you create your, bub your, your foam. And of course, more importantly, your loading rate or your, your hydraulic loading rate going through dissolved air flotation. Like I mentioned, flocculation is a very important part of the process. It's how you build your flock before it goes into air flotation. And there is different forms of flocculators. You can do a static flocculator. You can do a hydraulic flocculator. We recommend going with static. You can actually see it. You can control it. You can change the speed other than hydraulic flocculators, which you're at the mercy of the size or speed or the, the, the fluid dynamics of it. But the flocculation is something that certainly can't be ignored and jar testing and pilot plants allow you to actually specify exactly how much time you have. I'm not gonna go through these uh, too much simply because, because of time, uh, we gotta try to keep everything in compact and we wanna make sure that we can go over one of the retrofits that we did. This is a standard wastewater plant. When it comes to DAF, interesting note, as far as DAF's wastewater, you'll notice that your flock tanks are smaller and your DAF cell is bigger. So there you can see the ratio. Whenever you're going with wastewater DAFs, you need a smaller contact time as far as the flocculation. However, your DAF cells, you're going to be running them at much lower hydraulic levels. However, when we go to potable, you'll see that now we've got significantly larger flocculation cells. Then you've got a shorter DAF. So now you can have 
more contact time in here and less contact time in the DAF. So it's easy to see the ratio between one and the other. Here, here's a job that we were working on in, in Salina in Ohio. Turned out to be a four train DAF. Again, in this case, we didn't use filters. You'll notice that it's potable, larger flocculation, running at four MGD or four million gallons per day. I apologize, Waleed, all of my notes here are in gallons per minute. I'd have to do the math to find out what that comes out to cubes per day. So this is the overall um, look once the plant is all set up with all four trains. Um, Size-wise, again, you, you'll notice that the importance of the flocculator is making sure that they're sizing, and there's a very specific ratio uh, with the length ratio when, when it goes into the dissolved air flotation cells. Since we're talking about packaged and, of course, out of the box installations, this is something that's pretty compact. It goes, it's all pre-assembled, so by the time it gets delivered, you have a pretty nice compact installation. Of course, reduced uh, amount of space is also important, so make sure that you can get in there. You'll notice in this one, what was very unique in this case is they didn't have any redundancy requirements. However, in order to operate a unit and be able to do proper backwash on filters, the filter here is actually cut in half. So there's a dividing wall in here. So you can backwash each side of the filter module without interrupting total supply, which you'll notice that the branch is also going to be uh, set up so that you have the proper valves and connectors in order to do a continuous operation for 24 seven in spite of doing any kind of backwashing through it. So this gives you a pretty good side view of what one of these compact uh, modular installations would look like. I insist DAF comes in all shapes and sizes. This is a small little guy that we did in Alaska, 50 gallons a minute. So again, you can do from 50,000 gallons a minute to 50 gallons a minute. Interesting about this one, we had been working with the customer for a while and their plant burnt down, literally their water treatment plant burnt down. So they called us in a panic saying, okay, what can you get to us in the next six weeks? And we're like, how about we work with something like this? So you'll see very small, very compact, but again, the same process applies. You've got your flocculation, your DAF cell, and then your filtration. So the, the nice thing with DAF is that while you're still following the same mechanism, you, you are changing it around. You, you have to customize it based on the very specific plant conditions. Now, this is some examples of how it's used in wastewater. This is for municipal water than more than industrial. And then this is a short video. I don't think you're going to see the, hear the audio. It is actually pretty loud, but I'll give you what it looks like in operation. This is for a wastewater plant that we are doing for 25,000 gallons a minute that we did in New Jersey. And we have a little bit more of a case study on it afterwards. For lack of time, we're just going to show this video here. And you'll see it just skims everything off the top. Pretty nasty looking water. But then you'll notice that the effluent that we have on the other side is pretty good quality. Mind you, this is wastewater, so we are trying to reduce it to a very specific degree. So that is on water, on, excuse me, on the dissolved air flotation portion of it. And then you'll kind of see the operation, how it's going to be controlled, and then out the door. So this is more on the box solution. I'm going to go into retrofits. Retrofits are very different, but it still follows the same logic. We're trying to make sure that we can fit something that is already in place and sometimes it's 60 years old. And we're trying to make sure that we can fit and design around the existing installation or the basins. And we are using essentially the same technology, but we have to make do with what we have simply because uh, there's lack of enough space. So just a short little thing on the North Hudson Sewer Authority, for anyone that's not familiar with the area, the Hudson River is the river that goes between New York and, or Manhattan better, but New York and New Jersey. So here you've got the Hudson, uh, you've got Manhattan, uh, and then you've got the North Hudson Sewer Authority right here on, right on the map. So just to give you an idea of where it is geographically, uh, that's the view, and that's the view from the plant. A pretty nice view, if you ask me. Very nice running trails in this area. So with that, this is what the plant looks like once you go inside. So we were given, I don't want to say a blank slate, but we were given 10 cells and we said, okay, this plant is now 60 years old. It was built in the 1960s. What can we do with it to upgrade it to, to modern standards and make sure that we can achieve a uh, significantly higher flow? The first thing we did, of course, we had to fly a crew down there to have a look at it and make sure everything was measured out. We were given measurements that uh, obviously didn't make sense, especially when you've seen concrete plants sitting there for 60 years and any kind of movement that there's been around them. So what we decided to do was we had to go and measure every single cell individually. This was a total of 10 uh, dissolved air flotation trains. Each one of them had to be measured to make sure that we had all the sizes correct for each one. And we decided that we are going to phase it in and do two cells at a time. 
so as not to do all 10 at a time, of course, because we'd be, sit, we'd be shutting down the whole plant. Because we couldn't rely on the concrete being straight, we decided to put in our own rail system. By putting in our chain and flight design, we were able to mount it directly on the concrete walls and not worried about whether there was any size discrepancies or width discrepancies throughout the plant. Something that I'd like to point out is these rollers that we are using are called visconite. It's a very cool material. It's typically used in the mining industry. It has zero to no friction whatsoever. And we're rolling the visconite over this rail here. So because of that, it's incredible the difference it made when it came to the power consumption, simply because we were using the proper rollers. But this is what it looked like once we were installing it. As you can see here, the old cells, here are the new cells, uh, quite, quite a bit different. Uh, there was 10 of them. We were only doing two at a time. And then this is what it shows as far as the rollers goes. One of the nice things about these plants is dissolved air flotation sometimes has a bad rap about energy consumption. There are some moving parts and you've got your flocculation mixers, which are going to have a certain amount of power. You've got the skimmers that are also going to be using power, plus your saturators, plus your compressors, plus your recycling rates. However, what we try to do is we want to optimize and make sure that the power consumption is as low as possible. And interestingly enough, using the visconite rollers, like I'd mentioned, because they have very low friction, we were actually able to measure and see how much friction it was creating and how much power it was using in order to uh, come off the rollers. And as you can see right there, a standard DAF would be operating at a torque power of about, let me make sure I do the math, between 0.8 and 1 kilowatts per hour. And here we are achieving with the new rollers at 0.03, so very low. What it also allowed us to do is put alarm set points. We knew that the unit was always in operation when it was operating at below 0 0.05 or 0 0.03. We knew there wasn't any issues. The second, we knew that there was a spike in power. We understood that there might have been any kind of chain misalignment or something might have slowed down or something would have gotten dirty. So it was a very easy way to monitor maintenance going through it. So that's what it looked like before and that's what it looked like after. And this in all of four minutes is just a short way of taking a look and seeing how we can do some retrofits with this. And then lastly, this is a happy customer. So it looked like 10 trains operating at 25,000 gallons a minute, 36 MGD, million, uh, 36 million gallons a day. And there we have 136,000 cubes a day for water coming in at less than five NTUs. Now, mind you, of course, this is wastewater, but that is the water quality that we could essentially working with the 10 state standard uh, and be able to use the effluent going back into the Hudson River. So that's just a short summary of how we kind of work with modular dissolved air flotation systems along with some of the retrofit systems that we're working with. So I can open that up to, for questions. Thank you, Alex. Excellent presentation. And it's really amazing the equipment that you supply and manufacture. What really like excite me is how we are capable of shipping all your equipment miles away. So one of the discussion we had earlier in the panel, like customer experience. So how do you manage to make sure that customers are always happy and how do you support them? And there's always that saying of you got to over promise and under deliver. And that always makes it for a terrible combination. What maybe sometimes we do is working around a lot schedule, making sure that you give the client expectations of a clear schedule and make sure that they, they know that something's going to take, whether it's 20 weeks or 24 weeks, and that way you're managing expectations. If you give them a 24-week schedule and we manage to do it in 20 or 22, it means that we're doing it. And yes, shipping logistics, when you're doing jobs all over North America or you know South Africa or Hong Kong or Ireland, the, the shipping around it is uh, often out of your control. It is rarely in your control, especially now with the way things are, are going in the area, in the world as far as shipping and logistics as a whole. But yes, managing client expectations is very important for us. Thank you, Alex. There was a question about temperature and water versus wastewater. It's important to note that as far as recycling goes, the recycling rate, whenever you're doing, you're going through your saturator of wastewater is gonna be significantly higher than for potable water. So it's just something when you're sizing a plant, you wanna make sure that you take a look at what the recycling rate is on that. And then uh, lastly, a quick shameful plug for anybody that uh, doesn't know me or is not familiar with what we're doing. We do have a webinar that we do. It's bi-weekly. We touch on a lot of different topics. You're welcome to join. Yes, it's free. They're all 20 minutes, very short. Not quite as short as this, Walid. It was a lot of information to pack into 10 minutes, but make, make sure to join us. They're pretty informative and we touch a lot of different subjects when it comes to water treatment and water technologies. So 
With that, thank you very much for your time. Again, it would be great to connect on LinkedIn. Please uh, shoot me a note and we can keep in touch that way. Thank you, Alex. We, we had a question on the panel earlier. How do young professionals keep updated and learn about technologies? One, your webinar is one of the best in terms of connectivity because they are condensed and short, straight to the point, and people can learn a lot.